The Right Brain Initiative, Collecting Evidence of Student Learning. Thank you for your participation in the Right Brain Initiative. Just as in your own classrooms, we're learning that by looking at student work, we can find out what is making a difference for children and where we need to strengthen the way we work with classrooms and schools. So let's jump in using what teachers, artists, and students did last year. Those examples will bring the process to life, make the logistics clear, and illustrate what we are learning from looking at great student work. We'll start with a frequently asked question. What will your evidence look like? There are boundless possibilities here. During your initial planning meetings, teachers and artists, together with their arts integration facilitator, will begin to plan for what the student work evidence will be exactly as part of the overall Right Brain project. What you decide to collect from your students will be dependent upon what you hope to have students learn, understand, and do as a result of your specific Right Brain Initiative experience. The evidence you collect from your students will depend on three things. First, your goals for learning, whether they're certain concepts, essential understandings, or academic standards. The residency experience and activities themselves. And lastly, it will of course depend on your own time and resources. Most importantly, remember the collection of evidence should fit naturally and sensibly as part of your good teaching practice and current classroom curriculum. Here are some examples of the type of student work that can be collected. Writing samples are good to consider in light of the goals for improving literacy skills some of you will have. These can be poems, written explanations or directions, creative writing, and so on. This is an example of a writing sample from a point prior to the arts experience. The classroom teacher had the students writing poetry about the seasons. A photographer then joined up with this class to take photographs from various perspectives, like bird's eye view and snake's eye view. Some of the goals for this residency were that students would practice the use of descriptive words while creating original work. Practice careful looking by producing artwork connected to their everyday surroundings. And to reflect upon color exploration using language enriched with artistic terms. This is an example of a writing sample from a point after the experience, once the artist was no longer working in the classroom. But the teacher continued to have the students write poetry influenced by the arts experience. If your students will be creating and interpreting meaning in an art form, a good prompt might involve asking students to interpret a piece of visual art, performance, or music. What do you see or hear? What does it mean? Why do you think so? Another form your collected samples might take is audio recorded samples. To capture verbal communication skills, consider asking students a set of questions that are relevant to the learning or understanding you are hoping to achieve, or capture part of a class discussion or improvisation. Perhaps your right brain experience will involve each child speaking, presenting, or performing in some way. Collected samples might also take the form of illustration, be it drawing, photography, or some other form of illustrative creation. Some arts experiences might involve students creating visual diagrams or charts of their thinking. These can be created at the very beginning of the experience and then again later to look for growth and understanding. This combination of text and image might reveal a lot about what students know and understand and could perhaps be maps, diagrams, or demonstrations. For experiences involving performance-based arts like music, theater, or dance, photo or video documentation of your students' participation will allow you to illustrate the evidence of student learning. When using photos or videos, choose shots or excerpts that are most descriptive of specific students' growth. You might show how students are visibly more expressive at the end of the experience than at the beginning. In general, you may consider how a combination of these formats will be really effective for your specific project. A photo or good reproduction of any visual work, along with writing samples or audio recordings, will illustrate the connection between the student writing or speaking with the visual or performance making and doing. Also, keep in mind that there is no reason to omit evidence of personal growth and enjoyment that is so inherent in these experiences. We encourage teachers and artists to submit anecdotes, direct quotes from students or parents, or other photographs that you would like to share with a larger community. While you're planning the arts experience, consider ways you can get support and help in gathering evidence and learning. Perhaps there are parents or other volunteers that could assist in documenting or organizing. Don't hesitate to make your needs known to the staff at Right Brain. Another question for this process, what are all of these forms we're getting? 
In order to collect this evidence, it is necessary to secure parent permission forms. We would like to support you in gathering as many completed and signed permission forms as possible. Taking a quick look at the form itself, parents can consent to allow their student's work or image to be used in whatever way they feel comfortable. Work samples or photographs of students can be used internally or publicly, or they may limit use to just work samples or photographs of their child. The reverse of the form clearly describes the specific ways in which evidence and photographs are used, also covered later in this video. Once forms are collected, teachers should submit a class roster with their completed forms to their principal. Right Brain staff will use the rosters to tabulate forms, indicating green light for students whose work and images may be used, yellow light for students who have a specific combination of permissions to watch for, and red light for students whose work or images cannot be used. Teachers and principals will be given these tabulated lists to refer to while collecting evidence and visiting right brain photographers will be given copies if and when they come to document an artist's experience. You may now be asking, how much evidence do we need to collect? For this year, we're aiming for each school to collect from one class in each grade, six different students from each class, at three different points in time over the course of the right brain experience. The six students will represent three levels of academic performance, two of each considered to be struggling, striving, and flourishing. Please note that these three designations refer to how a student is performing generally as a student in school, not necessarily for any particular subject. These six students, and any students being documented for the right brain purposes, should all have green or yellow light permissions. We request three different points of collection. First, prior to the bulk of the learning experience. Imagine, for example, the first day a residency movement artist meets a class. A video clip is made of the students as they learn basic movement techniques to express the vocabulary words the residency is focusing on. Then, during the learning portion of the experience. In this example, now that the visiting artist has been with the students for a number of sessions, another video clip is made to see how they are expressing these vocabulary words through movement after experience with the techniques they've learned. And lastly, after the experience has been completed, to try and capture the spillover learning that can occur well after the artist has left. Continuing with the example, the student's kinesthetic experience with words and looking could be applied later by writing a closely observed story. As mentioned before, evidence from these three points should have close relevance to the project as a whole and be able to be compared to itself for each of your six students across time. How will I be supported during all of this collection? As you find out in the next section about the payoff of collecting evidence, you'll see that careful labeling and packaging will help the evidence maintain its usefulness over time. We are standing by with all of the supplies you need, labels, envelopes, equipment, and even some assistance in organization and photocopying can be provided by Right Brain. Just give us advance notice and we'll support you in the best way we can. So the important question, why are we doing this? When teachers and artists study and discuss student evidence, they often see how the programs can work better, more smoothly, and effectively. For example, last year, a group of teachers were able to figure out how they could continue using a puppetry residency throughout the year to build students' oral communication skills. They saw the young people they worked with in a different light and saw how their teaching had made a difference. One place this happens is at the reflection meeting that takes place a few weeks after the residency, when teachers, artists, and facilitators get together to look at student work and think about what students learned and what they learned as well. Each teacher brings his or her student samples to the meeting. If you have questions or want support, Right Brain volunteers can help you get ready for that meeting. At the end of the discussion, the facilitator will collect the samples and bring them to professional development in January or May. That way, your school's arts team and artist will have them for digging deeper. You should also know that with your permission, some collected evidence will be used for helping people outside of the education community understand our work, telling the story of what we've done and how well Right Brain is really serving its participants, improving and reflecting as we go. For more help in brainstorming what your evidence will be, consult with your arts integration facilitator. For support in collecting your evidence, contact me, Kendra Yao. I can arrange for the pickup and tabulation of parent permission forms and schedule volunteers to come to your school to photocopy or organize your evidence. 
We sincerely value your participation and look forward to being able to share with all of you the learning and work taking place this year.